My next guest, if I were to describe a gentleman as being handsome, debonair, dashing, ladies' man, famous, marvelous, you would know I was not speaking of myself, but Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., and here he is. <laughs> Interrupting this, uh, I've been envying you off stage watching all of this going on. Here. Yeah, this is a good group. And, and I said, This is terribly rude of me to interrupt. Uh, you have only added luster to our already lustrous assemblage. I talk funny. You know, I always wanted to be a stunt man as a kid for a very long time. I really did. I don't know if I've ever talked about this. I wanted to. I used to fall out of trees. And have I ever mentioned that? <laughs> Never mentioned it. Well, I did. And I heard that you did all your own stunts in those most swashbuckling episodes of those films. Sort of foolishly, yes. I've got almost every finger in my hands broken, scars all over the place. Really? Mm -hmm. You know, I've been asking film actors when they've been on the show if they've, if they've been hurt. I don't know how I started this, but uh, <laughs> I might as well keep the survey going. What did you do to your hands? Well, just a series of, of different kinds of stunts over a long period of time. I mean, there'd be one thing breaking one bone, another one getting this cut. And <laughs> ironic thing, I was five years in war, four out of the five years was in action, never got a scratch, but all got any number of broken bones and scars and <laughs> things like that just from films. War is easy, but movies are dangerous. <laughs> oh, very dangerous. Yeah. That is ironic. Uh, a lot of people have that happen to them. They go through the war and then they get hurt at home. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, what was the closest you came to being personally damaged in the war? Oh, there were several occasions. Um, be difficult to pick one out. Yeah. Sort of a little embarrassing too, to pick up one. It all sounds so pompous to say, you know, I did this, that. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I can understand know. that. You, you were, um, is it true that you, you were knighted? Or yes. something resembling knighted? Yes. It was no, actually knighted. Yeah, yeah. But you're yeah. an American. Yeah, a lot of, you know, it's a, it's a misconception. I think the only reason that um, people get confused is that because I'm uh, of the world of the theater and mm -hmm. uh, therefore it gets more notice. But in actual fact, a great number of Americans have been knighted um, and a great number of all sorts of nationalities. Um, Ike Eisenhower uh, was a knight, General Marshall. They never knighted me. They never knighted me. They never But make a day knight. Well, they will they get that fixed up. They never knighted either one of us. They never, neither of you ladies has been. Uh, I can't understand. Well, <laughs> they're, after Myra Breckenridge, they'll. I don't know which. <laughs> yes, it'll be yeah, one. I was valiant. <laughs> one long night after that. Yeah. Um, what am I saying? <laughs> Sir, so it could, in fact, be Sir Douglas Fairbanks if you chose to... Theoretically, if you, yeah. If you Except added the, the custom, sir... The custom is, uh, since the Middle Ages, that a foreigner doesn't take it. on the thing. I mean, there's no law against it, but it's just a custom from the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. But as I say, Eisenhower, Marshall, all out of the generals and admirals, and many of our ambassadors were too. If you added the sir at the beginning, would you drop the junior at the end? <laughs> sir Junior somehow doesn't, doesn't seem to work. Why have you abandoned acting? Well, I tell you, um, I had about 37, 38 years of it, had my own company, and I was always told if you're a gambler, you ought to stop while you're ahead. And I was very lucky. I was, uh, had a long string of good luck. And the time came when I thought, this is getting to be a strain to keep the standard up. Maybe the time to do is to quit now before somebody says, why don't you quit? So you got and, out ahead of that. Uh, I got out ahead of that and uh, thought, leave well enough alone. Yeah. Can you imagine, Raquel, getting to the point where you would think, I I've had enough of this now and I'll just rest on my laurels. Yes, I can. <laughs> can you? Does it yes. seem far off? Oh, um, well, I, I can't think ahead anymore because the world is going too fast for me now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard for me to, to make a, uh, a resolution for five, ten years from now. But uh, I would love to be like uh, Mr. Fairbanks <laughs> or Sir Fairbanks. Oh, and have yeah. <laughs> and have somebody come up and say, I wish you'd make a movie, you know. You'd like to be, be asked and be able to I mean, say. After after you quit, you know. It's, it's much nicer than having to say, Why did you make yeah. it? You know, why? <laughs> why yeah, if you, you have your if you have your choice, it'd be better to. Yesterday, yesterday I was up in Canada for a, a ceremony. They're building an enormous uh, condominium up there, mm -hmm. and uh, nice enough to name it after me. And so I was very flattered by this. And there was one uh, old. Uh, pompous and um, you know, retired army man said, uh, uh, I'm making a connection with you. Now, what, and I thought he was going to mention some old movie. He said, 
Oh, you're the fellow that's building this building across the way, aren't you? You know, so that just shows. Oh, no, that's, so that was the limit of, of, uh, of the connection with him. So 45 films fleeting. and you're known for a building. <laughs> yeah. Uh, was it odd being the, the son of that f famous a father? Did it create an unhappy childhood in any way? I wouldn't call it un unhappy at all. Mm -hmm. I was always very proud of it. Uh, but I, I wasn't very close to him at first, and he was very much opposed to my having, uh, going to have a career at all. But then we became very, very, uh, very close. It made it difficult in the sense that people expected more of you in that particular line, so you were always uh, making an extra special effort. Mm -hmm. um, I think you'd be so. You kind tended of... to be fired quicker than most people because you didn't <laughs> deliver it as quickly as they expected, you know? Really? Because they'd say, if your father would have done it this way? Or, or, or something, you know? Yeah. You, you, aren't, you aren't the man. Father was so the door may be open to get in, but it stays open. You get kicked out that much quicker too. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many of us here would, if you had to quickly answer, did you have happy or unhappy childhood? Which would you raise your hand on? Happy? I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember? I can't remember. Is it a blank? A lot of it? Oh. Really? Yeah. Oh. Except this reunion yeah. you're going to. What about you? I remember a few of those people. I don't remember their names. But I remember the vibes. But you will be, because you'll all be wearing those plastic things <laughs> and your names on them. What about your job? I, I remember it as pleasant. Mm. And, um, and yet, at times, I can remember times when it didn't seem like it was, mm. but I've sort of blotted those out. Yeah. Be, I, I'd be curious to be able to go back and go through it all again. I think everybody would. I guess mm. in psychoanalysis or in hypnosis, even, you can dredge up things that you've I would never do it again. repressed. You wouldn't go through it again. It was hard enough the first time. <laughs> I wouldn't do it again. Do you remember your dreams, Raquel? Oh, my dreams. Your dreams. Which which ones? What's the last one you remember? <laughs> oh wow. Well, the la I've been dreaming for nights about that premiere. I mean, I just keep seeing, pushing and shoving and flashing and and getting mad. That's yeah. all. That's the last dream. But before, um, that when I was a little girl, I always used to dream that there was this ballet dancer and she was doing that this thing called a forte, mm -hmm. which is that terribly difficult and complicated spin that they do, and just doing it like intensely, you know, until there were just sparkles coming out all over the place. And then I couldn't remember this other dream I used to have where they, there were men and beautiful women on flying trapezes, and they used to do these somersaults and clamp their hands over the bars. It was fantastically exciting. Gee. That was all. That's the only thing that I can really. Do you know about F. Scott Fitzgerald? I mean, would you ever uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald freak? Sure. Yeah, well, I was. I've been an F. Scott Fitzgerald freak for years, and uh, Zelda just came out, and uh, you all read it. She was something else. Yeah. yeah. Miss Milford wrote that. Yes, she did indeed. I'd like to read that. Good. You recommend it? Yeah. Oh, oh well, well, I'm a Fitzgerald freak, but it, it gives a lot, a lot of insight, like you. The impression I got from all the Fitzgerald uh, autobiographies I'd read was that he sort of destroyed her, right? Mm -hmm. But he wrote her a letter, and he said, they keep saying that we destroyed each other. He said, I don't believe it's true. He said, we destroyed ourselves. His letters are wonderful. Did you oh, think of so him when hers. she mentioned ballet dancing? Yes, and that's what I thought. We, we have a message. We'll be right back after this. <laughs>